All right, peace, peace to everybody out there in YouTube land. It's Alicia Mayo, the CEO and founder of Clarity Media. Clarity Media is a nonprofit media organization that specializes in publicity work, public relations work, uh, marketing, advertising, um, crafting your brand, uh, really understanding your uh, audience, engagement, um, social media tricks, the trade of social media, it is a trade. Now people are getting paid on social media, including myself, okay? So I am building my subscribership I, or membership. That's coming soon. Uh, I have been going live on YouTube to build my audience, to really build my um, revenue stream on YouTube. And that's what it takes. It takes long form content of substance. You can't be on just um, wasting people's time, really. But, you know, there is an audience for every YouTuber out there. There is an audience. And so I, my advice, my advice to you is to never give up. If you want to be paid by YouTube for, you know, creating content and having conversations online, keep trying. Don't give up. Keep trying. Okay, now I'm going to adjust my mic here and make sure it's all cool. I've got this really cool Rode wireless go-to mic. Comes with the monitor, which is standby. Right here really small monitors and you can see the levels changing as I'm speaking there. It might be a little technical for some, but for those who are serious about your content and uh, making sure that you are producing good quality content, you'll want to get yourself um, a cordless mic and a monitor. <laughs> Can't use the mic without the monitor. All right, again, I'm Alicia Mayo. I'm the CEO and founder of Clarity Media. And like I said, Clarity Media is about a number of things. I'm an independent contractor. I don't work for anyone except myself. It's wonderful. It's a wonderful thing. And uh, from time to time, I do get some government contracts. And um, those are very specific contracts, and I negotiate them you know, the way I want to because government grant grants can be very tricky. There is the public expectation and um, using the funding that the taxpayers are um, providing nonprofit organizations is a really important component. But because I am a on the professional side and on the internal side, offering publicity or working as a publicist and working as a marketer and a um, brand manager. Oftentimes I'm working for the actual government and not for the people. Now, some people may not understand that, others will understand it. For those of you who don't understand it, again, I am not working for the public, but I am working for the government that the public provides funding for. So I still have to answer to the public. I still have to make sure that I am transparent, and that I am completely following um, compliance in terms of my contract. Okay, and I do that, I do that. I've only been a nonprofit now for a couple of years two and a half years, not quite three years. And, um, or maybe I'm coming up on three years. I've got to take a look at the date. But um, in that sh short window, long to some, short to me, in that short window, I've had some success. But I've had that success because I knew what my model would be and I knew where the need was, okay? And so the need is, for me, in a particular segment of industry and business, and uh, for me it works.
for me it works and for my vendors it works. Okay. Uh, or for the principles. So uh, now I'm on live because I wanted to address a couple of things that have a lot to do with what I just explained and how I work. I've been under scrutiny uh, because the contract that I had with the San Francisco Human Rights Commission and their Dreamkeeper Initiative came under scrutiny also. So everybody under the same umbrella, for the most part, are being looked at. Not everyone, but some of us who stand out more than others. And I will say that for me, the reason the spotlight has been on me is because I am an official media organization. And so some media folks and others who call themselves the media who aren't media, they're actually rogue media or gossip columnists or um, just, uh, let's see, agitators, agitators, disruptors, you know, those folks took aim at me because my media organization is very unique, it's black woman owned, it's black woman operated, and it focuses on content about black people. <laughs> and so, you know, those are some of the reasons I've been a target. Um, I think I'm also a target because I'm very professional at what I do. I'm good at it. And uh, some people are just envious. They don't know how to do it. They can't present themselves, you know, in the same way. And um, that envy or jealousy sets in with everyone. It's just a fact, okay? So it's part of that. And then, you know, I'm an easy target. I'm on social media. I'm everywhere. So I'm an easy target, an easy target. They know where to find me. So they just take jabs and shoot at me. And so what these rogue media organizations and gossip columnists and disruptors have been talking about concerning me is how I ended up living in Jamaica. So how did I move from being a contractor with the city and county of San Francisco to now living in Jamaica? For some of you, you can imagine how it could have happened. I mean, the possibilities are endless, right? <laughs> the possibilities are endless to explain how I got here. But for one rogue media organization, they are spinning these accusations and assuming and gossiping and predicting and claiming that I stole public funds to move to Jamaica, to retire. That, that is, specifically, to retire in Jamaica. And like I said earlier, I follow rules. That's what I do in my life. That's what I do for a living. And believe it or not, when you follow some rules and you play fair and you're honest and you're transparent and you are honest and transparent and you don't, you know, you don't lie and you don't cheat or steal, it pays. It pays to be a good person in this society. It pays to run your businesses professionally with consideration for others. It pays. It pays to do the right thing in this world. And I have done a lot of the right thing. And that's how I ended up here in Jamaica. Now, I've told this story a million times, it feels like, maybe 50 times, 100 times. But it feels like a million times because 
For some, they want to continue to accuse me of stealing public funding. I would never do that. It is not in my character to steal anything from anyone for any reason. I have everything I need in life. I have always had everything that I needed in life. Now, I was born and raised in San Francisco by a great family, a great, hardworking, honest family. I was raised by my mom, an entrepreneur. She owned a beauty salon and a nail salon, and she also is now running her own child care business. Okay, so she raised me to be a businesswoman. She raised me to be a smart businesswoman and a very professional and honest businesswoman. My grandparents were business owners as well. My brother, myself, I've owned the media organization. I owned a child care business myself, a very successful, nationally accredited child care business that um, was recognized by the Solano County um, Children's um, Children and Families Services Unit. And um, I was one of about 30 civilian providers to the military Air Force Base at Travis Air Force Base in Fairfield, California. And I was the first um, national media professional to produce a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week digital news program called Cron On for Cron for Television, San Francisco. I was the only black person on national radio for iHeartMedia uh, in the northern region of the United States. Um, I was a news anchor and traffic reporter for KCBS Radio, the only black woman on the air there in years. I have made history. I have broken barriers and done some extraordinary things in my life. And I've never had to lie, cheat, steal, or fake anything like these fake news organizations and these fake podcasters and these fake, fake people with information, quote unquote, and news. They're writing about me because I've done some extraordinary things and they would love to rip me apart, to drag me, as one says. Oh, I'm gonna drag you. Why? What did I ever do to you besides avoid you? Now, as a kid growing up in the housing projects in San Francisco, I avoided the one rogue media, quote unquote, so-called podcaster, who's really come for me lately, calling me white boots because I had on a great pair of white boots one day. <laughs> and when she took a look at me and my white boots, her and another person, they immediately, you know, just that hate fills up in some people's hearts and minds and they, they just cannot deal with someone else's success. There are people like that in the world. Nevertheless, this particular podcaster is um, one of those people and she's been coming for me lately because she is jealous and she is envious and she could never, she could never be me. That's it, that's all. She wants to be me, literally wants to be me. She can't, she can't ever. And uh, so she wants to talk about what she doesn't know. She's following another rogue media organization that had questions about how I ended up moving to Jamaica, having had a contract with the Human Rights Commission that also gave contracts to some other folks, nonprofit organizations specifically, black owned nonprofit organizations who actually did misuse public dollars. But I was not one of them. 
I was never investigated for anything. I have always been in compliance as a nonprofit organization doing business with the city and county of San Francisco. They investigated the Dreamkeeper Initiative. The city attorney didn't find anything wrong with me and my organization and how I ran and operated the business. I did everything by the book. I have all of my receipts. I paid all of my employees. I even went into debt and took some hits on my credit score in order to provide the services that I provided for the Human Rights Commission and that Dream Keeper Initiative. So I took some losses myself doing the work for the Dream Keeper Initiative and that's why I will never take another grant from the Dream Keeper Initiative again. I don't wanna go through it. You know, it'll be different for someone else, but I have chosen not to ever do business with them again. So about me being here in Jamaica in this beautiful place, it's gorgeous here, number one. And I'm 59 years old and I decided to retire early. I retired from the Fairfield Sassoon Unified School District after working about 12, 13 years as a special education paraprofessional and an itinerant for the school district supporting children and their families within the special education department. So I retired from that. I retired from my media work. I spent more than 40 years in radio and television media. So I retired from that. I retired from my marriage. <laughs> my marriage was good at first and it wasn't so good later. And so I retired after trying to work at it for 23 years plus. And I threw in the towel, literally, threw in the towel. Whoop, I'm done. <laughs> and in California, fortunately for me, you know, everything will split right down the middle evenly. And so I also collect alimony and my ex-husband's retirement. That's nobody's business, but I'm just sharing. I'm being transparent like I always am. Yeah, I have on cool sunglasses like um, Susan Reynolds talked about. My too cool for school sunglasses. I love sunglasses, especially out here in Jamaica where the sun is always shining. The weather is nice and mild and it's just a chill place to be, an iry place to be. And no, I'm not high. I just have on blue today. Let me show you the outfit of the day. Running shorts and a free to love American flag t-shirt. Oh, and some Nikes, really comfortable Nikes to go walking in. <laughs> outfit of the day, okay? So, uh, again, you know, I'm on because I want to explain some things to folks, some things that I really don't have to explain, but I'm transparent. I have nothing to hide. I have no reason to lie. So, also I got here um, because I decided that instead of staying in the States, and um, struggling to pay rent in the States as a single woman, it would just be too much stress for me. Like I said, I'm 59 years old. I'm getting to the point where I just don't have a lot of patience, you know, for a lot of nonsense, a lot of mistreatment, you know, anti-blackness and anti-women, anti-black women. I'm done with all of it. I'm done with it. I love my country. I will continue to be a citizen. I will be back to visit my sons and friends and family and, you know, 
Maybe I'll come back for a contract or two, but it won't be with the city and county of San Francisco. That's for sure. But whatever, you know, I am free to love and free to roam the earth. That is the right that I have. You have those rights too, especially if you're an American. And I am proud to be an American. Yeah, born and raised in San Francisco, California. Love my city no matter what, no matter how bad things get, no matter how ugly people act, no matter how, how, um, no matter how bad the reputation of black nonprofit organizations get. I love my city. Hmm. I just happen to be a nonprofit organization and I just happen to be black. Like I said, I've only been in this nonprofit business for three years and I'm done. It was never my intention to work in nonprofit. Never. I've always worked in private businesses. I've always worked for myself and I've always just kept to myself, kept my business and my life to myself. Once I started working <laughs> as a nonprofit, uh, black-led nonprofit uh, founder, I found <laughs> that it's a doggy dog world, the nonprofit world. It's pretty cutthroat. Yeah, it's not a not for everyone. Not for everyone. Let me just say that. Okay, so the other way I got here is um, when I divorced, um, I was living in one of our two houses that we owned. My ex-husband went to one house, I went to the other. Our children were being transported between the two of us, you know, and that wasn't good. Um, eventually, our sons got old enough to decide where they wanted to be, and as young men, 13 and 15, they wanted to be at dad's house most of the time because mom started dating again. And, you know, some of you single women or single men understand, you know, the dynamics of raising children when you're a single parent and, you know, dating and how that might affect the children. So anyway, and it wasn't because my sons didn't like me. That's what the rogue media would say. Oh, her sons didn't like her, and that's why they moved in with their father. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. And shame on you for saying some horrible things. Why? Why? Why be so nasty and so cruel and so mean? So anyway, uh, I was in the house that I was awarded and um, my ex-husband still had equity interest in that house. For those of you who understand California divorce laws, you understand. So we were sharing equity in both. He sold the house he was in, didn't share the proceeds with me like he should have. And I decided to sell the house that I was in and I shared the proceeds like I was supposed to, but I still won big time. We had a lot of equity, thank God, thank you God. See, that's what God does and that's how things work when you are smart and you make great choices. So I walked away with a sweet amount of equity, so sweet that I was able to go shopping around the world for a place to live because I was done with the United States a long time ago, like two years ago, I was done with the United States in my heart and in my mind. I was done for a lot of reasons, including the way people behave. I don't like the attitudes of many people these days. I don't understand why people have to be so mean and nasty to others. It's just not how I was raised. It was not part of my culture in my family, in my environment, although I did live in those housing projects in Double Rock, Hunters Point, Fillmore, and Lakeview with majority of black families. But those families weren't all 
rogue and nasty and mean and demonic and evil and backstabbing and undercutting. And they weren't, for the most part, they were hardworking families that had standards and uh, traditional values that they lived by. It is not the case today. There are great people out there in the world, but then there are a whole lot of ugly people, a whole lot of nasty people, a whole lot of mean spirited people who are going to have to answer for their behavior. Some are. Some are answering for their bad behavior, being afflicted with illnesses like cancer, losing loved ones to gun violence and just unnatural causes of death. So many people are unhappy in their relationships. They're not happy at work. They're living lifestyles that are just very difficult because of their choices. Hello. Make better choices, people. And ladies, when you're choosing a man, marry well. Choose wisely. Own some real estate. Buy some real estate. Don't buy a car before you buy a house. You know, those kinds of rules, things that are standard and, you know, pretty common and easy to understand. Obvious things that people can do to make them, their lives better that just don't choose to live better lives, okay? I chose to live a great life. So here I am in Jamaica. I collected my equity, I collect my alimony, I collect my retirement, my ex-husband's retirement, and a little bit that I have from the school district. I worked my ass off, people. I had two and three jobs at one time. <laughs> I, I, was like, I was like Jamaicans with multiple jobs. That's the stereotype, but Jamaican people work very hard. They know how to work hard. They don't have a problem sweating, and neither do I. And I don't have a problem working hard because I know in the end it will pay off. So that's how I got here to Jamaica, for those who need to know. And here I am still being blessed in Jamaica. I was studying for the Jamaica Real Estate Board license for an agent, real estate agent, and real estate salesman. And I studied when I was still in the States. I started studying in July, and I just wrapped up my studies, and I took the exam to become a real estate agent and salesperson here in Jamaica. Wow. How exciting, how blessed I feel. God just continues to make a way for me because I make a way for myself. I use the good sense that God gave me. I make some good choices. And I do what I think is the best thing. So here I am waiting for my results. I won't get the results until February. I'm really excited. The test seemed pretty easy. And if I pass it, which I believe I will, I will then proceed to begin to sell and train to sell and rent, become a, an agent or a manager of properties. As a matter of fact, I got a beautiful invitation from a resort owner in Treasure Beach to visit her. She's gonna pick me up from the bus station tomorrow and I'm going to go and visit her and talk about the future in real estate. So here I am doing my damn thing and loving every minute of it. So no matter what those rogue media organizations or those wannabe podcasters have to say about me, I am living a good life for a reason because I've chosen to live a good life. 
and I've chosen to be good to others. So here I am. I'm retired in Jamaica. My earlier question this year, uh, earlier this year was, can I retire in Jamaica? Well, looks like I have retired in Jamaica happily ever after. You can too. Reach out to me in the comments if you have any questions about how I did it. I have some more videos that you can watch to check out my um, journey. And I'll be back with more, more on this journey here in Jamaica. I'm loving every minute of it. And I hope that you will join me on this ride. Subscribe, tap on the notifications bell, and I'll see you soon. Take care, everybody.